Item one. Physiology. This one. Must I appear for the petition? Wait a second. Just a second. Give me just a second. Really to mirror it. Will I appear for the respondent? I am for the petitioner. You are for the petitioner? I am for the petitioner. Yes. To be transferred, is ma'am. Your Lordship, just one. You're a small child who is just about uh, four years, three years old, three and a half years old. Your Lordship, just one request. There are three cases pending, so uh, the cases may be uh, heard on a common date. In Delhi, you mean? In Meerut. In Meerut. That you can, if you will have to apply to the uh, to the competing court to sort of club all the cases. Maybe can't do that. 
So we will allow it. Yes, we will allow it. Allow it. Why should we? Item two. Three hundred. Three hundred. This is a transfer petition by the husband. May I please? He is physically disabled. This is a uh, transfer petition. Who is appearing for the other side, ma'am? Uh, your lordship, the other side, no one is appearing, and the service is complete. If your lordship could direct the legal aid services, because your lordship, the office report says that service has been. Fresh notice also was issued. Yeah. Turn it round. And the only trouble is for her also. I we I see the point that your client is physically physically he's orthopedically uh, disabled. Yes, your lordship. But for imagine she is at Jalpaiguri. Yes. Sir. For us to make her travel from Jalpaiguri to Solan, it will virtually go ex parte. If last lastly your lordships, if legal aid could be directed after that, your lordships. Uh, and VC also can be. Or virtual, your lordships. After you at Solan. Uh, yes, you uh, in uh, West Bengal your lordships. Then you could appear virtually. So what you're saying is different side correct. So. And then what we will do is that we will dismiss your transfer petition, but we can say that you can appear through via video conference through the virtual platform. Yeah. Hmm? Please, your lordships. So, if I could appear because he has a genuine cause, your lordships. Yes, yes, yes. Understand. Uh, while we are not inclined to allow the transfer petition, why they are inclined not to permit, uh, to, to grant the request from the transfer petition, which is for transfer of the proceedings under the Domestic Violence Act 2005 from the CJM Jalpaiguri to the competing court at Solan. We see to the alternative submission of the then counsel for the petitioner that the petitioner would be permitted to, may be permitted to appear to the video conferencing platform in the case which is pending at before the CJM Del Paiguri. Please do it. Or maybe direct that the petitioner shall be permitted by the CJM Del Paiguri to appear uh, to the virtual mode. Please do it. In pursuit of his defense. To stop. The trans subject to the aforesaid, the transfer petition is disposed of. I think this is a fair order. Absolutely. Absolute. Obliged. Are you? Item three. Item three. This is from a letter. There's a letter. There's a letter here. There's a letter. Yeah. Letter has been submitted on behalf of, right. the, respondent. of the respondent. We'll keep it after the vacation. Then. Item four. four. The transfer petition by the husband. Lordship, yes. yes. So there are two transfer petitions. Lordship, one is by the husband and the other one is by the wife. By the wife. Both are there. Now, in this particular case, one wants to transfer from Bangalore to Mumbai, and the. Why? First, first one is by the husband. Yes. Who wants the transfer of the uh, divorce petition filed by the wife from Bangalore rural to Bandra? Lordship, Lordship. A children are two children. But Lordship, in this case, actually, what has happened is the matter was in mediation, and there is, according to me, there is no reason for the mediation to have failed. But it failed. I mean, you can't. They are all both educated. They know where they stand, and they didn't want to mediate. But Lordship, Lordship, in this case, what has happened is that we just wanted visitation rights. Lordship has granted us visitation rights in this matter. Now, see what we can do is we will transfer the wife's divorce petition to uh, Bandra Mumbai. The interim order by which we had granted you visitation rights, we'll continue that until it is modified by a competing court so that you will continue have to have video uh, visitation rights. If she wants a modification in the sense she wants something different, she can apply. You want something more, you can apply to the competing. Well, Lordship, at least let me have physical access to the child. I've not met him for one and a half years of both my children. Who's and I have pictures on record, Lordship, after the order. I'm willing to. Dismissing your petition, we will allow the wife's petition. Well, Lordship, in that, in, Lordship, please bear me for a minute. In this particular case, the wife is working with Tata Power in senior position. The minute I filed my guardianship case, she orchestrated a transfer 
and she moved to Bangalore with her kids. There's no orchestration because the it's fact is that you know it's a divorce petition, and the, the fact remains that she has two children to look after. Divorce petition filed not yet five months after she shifted. It is so, and then the transfer was filed eight months. We will we will dismiss your transfer petition and permit. We will say that we will permit you to appear on video conferencing. So, Lord Chief, may please give me substantial visitation rights. Lord Chief, just one. No, sir, no, sir, 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 because the father's conduct is not good with the children, sir. He is asking the children, does your mother beat up you? Does your mother, does your grandmother beat you up? Lord Chief, this kind of conduct is there, sir. Every now and then, he is harassing the children and the. Oh. Lord Chief, I am so sorry, Lord Chief. I. Giving certificate from Bangra Mumbai to Kishkut, sir. Lord, I am willing to. Sorry. We will. What we'll do is that we will not, uh, because if we dispose of the petition, the interim order comes to an end. We will continue the benefit of access to the children through the video conferencing mode, as we had given you earlier. Has that been? Has that fructified? No, that's a that's a problem. Has that fructified? Did you meet the children? Yes, Lord, sir. For the first two months, yes, but thereafter is deteriorating. That's why we wanted to mention this matter. It's been deteriorating because sometimes a child is come, comes at eight o'clock in the evening when the child the child is asleep. So that's not happening properly. How old is the child? The child is eight and six years old. So the point is that, and then what happens? The mother, you know, fixes all the activities, robotics, etc., all activities. So the activity you know, eight, six, and eight-year-olds have a very hectic social life nowadays. You know, they do all kinds of things. They learn. Doorship, I'm saying, I am willing to. I am willing to travel. I am willing to even bear the expenses of the children, though she is earning handsomely. I am willing to pay the education expenses till the post-graduation doorship. I just want to meet my children, not just. I do not. I and I am the biological but father. Therefore, you have filed for guardianship, right? Yes, I filed it in Mumbai. Now, in your guardianship petition, you can apply for access to the children. We will say that. The guardianship petition, I have already applied for access. Like we will say, uh, there, there is no reason to transfer the uh, petition which has been instituted by the respondents uh, for divorce uh, from. Bangalore Rural, from the district court Bangalore Rural to the family court in Bandra, like in Mumbai. But stop. This is particularly in the light of the fact that the respondent has two minor children who are with her in Bangalore. But stop the transfer. However, by an interim order dated 27 January 2023, uh, the petitioner was granted access to the children through the video conferencing mode on Saturdays and Sundays at 4 p.m. But stop. The duration, um, it was agreed, shall be of 30 minutes on each occasion, subject to extension on mutually acceptable terms. So stop. In order to enable the petitioner to have continued access, um, we continue the arrangement uh, which was made in the order dated 27 January 2023. So however, it would be open to any of the parties to apply before the competing court. Uh, either for enhanced or modified. Lord Shiva, please give one physical access once in a month, once in no, a sir, week. No. Lord Shiva, please one day. She is not willing, and we, we honestly we don't know because we have not interacted with the parties of the children. We, give, we have given you liberty to move the competing court in your guardianship petition for access. So we have left it open to you. Lord Shiva, the case is now being shifted to Mumbai, and we are for meeting video conferencing. And in four point one, this is allowed. the wife's petition that we will allow. So then, Lord Chief, then I have to go to Bangalore to contest the case. Uh, we will, uh, we will. There, we have said that you can appear through video conferencing. In her petition, we will say you can appear through video conferencing, and uh, you, you don't have to go and contest in Bangalore. We, in her petition, you allow the huh. the usual sentence on video conference. So you can appear through a virtual platform. Item file. Item file. Please, Mila. May I please me let this is the petition filed by the minor children uh, seeking a transfer from uh, Patiala House to Hyderabad. Lachi. Now they are in college, they are in the school at Hyderabad, and the mother is, is not doing any job and she has no capacity to come on the day to the day. So seeking transfer of the maintenance petition to Hyderabad, state of Hyderabad. Lachi. So, uh, so the maintenance is filed on behalf of the children in the family court, in the Patiala House court. Lachi. Who want yeah. that to be transferred? That is to be gone to the Telangana State of Family Court at Telangana Lodge. For the respondent, ma'am, is this complete not the When he is not appearing here, sir. though he has no taken notice and they will be here. This is complete. So, record that this is complete. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This body is over. Yes, ma'am, we are allowed. Much of laser, Mila. 
Mr. Attorney General. We have assembled today for the ceremonial court farewell to my very distinguished this colleague. Right this is uh, it's not a good manner to read the judges. Can I request you to uh, begin the proceedings by saying some words? A few I was words. just trying to say it's probably not good manner on the part of Attorney General <laughs> to read the eye of the departing judge to find out what's happening in his mind. But, but I, I thought I may do that. I know that. Uh, we are we were affectionate ill will. But those good thoughts which went into Justice Joseph's mind never always. And uh, there are so many personal recollections I can uh, share both in this court and a very interesting occasion when I appeared before the Lordship of the Chief Justice in Uttarakhand. And just before that, I asked some of my counsel colleagues in Kerala High Court as to what kind of an experience I would have appearing before Justice Joseph. And the kind of remark I thought exactly fitted with the kind of an experience I had before Chief Justice. The case of a hotel who sought uh, arguing after quite a long time, and uh, we got an order, but it ultimately turned out to be in favor of my, the client. So, outwardly, it was not. So, those so many recollections before and becoming Attorney General and after becoming Attorney General. And uh, what comes to your mind is that. If they say that when judges take oath, these these are qualities which enter into your decision making process, and how subtly they enter into your mind, and they occupy the field of jurisprudence. I say that you are one of the extreme examples, and we are indebted as an institution and the bar for having been with us. And I'm sure we will be we too even after retirement in our other engagements in the administration of justice and the pursuit of law. Mr. Solicitor General. I, I share not the views of the learned age, and uh, I wish you a lot of a very healthy life. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, I, I must also welcome you as president of the SCB on this. Yeah, event. on behalf of the Supreme Court of Bar Association, I pay great honorable Mr. Joseph, and he has been a source of inspiration for all of us. Thank you. Mr. Venkatraman. This is what we have learned in all your 17 years of my appearance in your Lordship Court, starting from Kerala. How you unravel facts so intensely and intimately and creatively render justice in the law of jurisprudence. You are admired certainly for your scholastic experience you share in the court of law and the way you have nuanced several issues on the constitutional. You will therefore remain in the exclusive club of jurists in this world, post your retirement too. And two things, people from Tamil Nadu, I, I hail from that state, extremely glad and happy. You have your parting judgment to the constitutional bench, sitting in the court of the bench, <laughs> that has this power to a lot. A great, great touch to the human sentiments of people in that uh, state. And last words for a lot, your father has been your guru. And we came to know that you're going to be your guru and mentor to your son. And we wish the family sports a hat Amish Inoy. Yes. Uh, your Lordship has every single quality which makes for an exemplary judge. Be it your compassion, be it your, you were progressed in thought and personally completely committed to social justice, you engaged with us, your lordships, and every time the level of discourse, you took it to a higher level. It was an absolute pleasure to appear before your lordships. And I can only say, I'm very young, not, not so young, but may God bless you. May God bless you with immense and good health and a life filled with music, because I think your Lordship is very, very fond of music. Um, all the very, very best to you, Your Lordship. Uh, Dr. Singhvi, uh, Dr. Singhvi. Dr. Singhvi, you're muted, actually. Yes. Again, you're muted, Dr. Singhvi. Yes, now it's... Uh, Dr. Singhvi, I'll come back to you in a moment because you are muted. Uh, we'll just... Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes.
I wish you all the best in your life. And I just want to say one thing that you have been such a calm judge who have gone to the depth of every bit of it. I have been personally engaged in one of the matters where you took us to your chambers and you listened to all of us so patiently as to understand the depth of the matter. And we went deeper and deeper into it and we asked the other party also that whether I can take these uh, evidence. Delighted to have you, a lot. You have actually given the highest democracy. Actually, given the rule of law. We will listen to immensely a lot. We are actually going to be this uh, calmness and the attitude and the compassionate situation we always created in the, uh, the courts. I'm so happy. Yes, I'm happy. Thank you all the best health and health. My Lord is the author of the uh, Constitution, Management, the Election Commission appointment. Members appointment and remember this is a strengthen of the democracy. Melos is a filling, fill up the gap of the last 75 years. This is a really is a path breaking Mr. Bibi Dinesh. Uh, Mr. Sir. Raj, I'll just come back to you in a moment. I'll just come back to you. Yes, Mr. Dinesh. Lord, sir, it's a very sad day for us. Whenever a new judge comes to this court, he asks how about that judge. Then the if the answer is if there is no difference between senior and junior. Then the test is everybody knows. And uh, if you have a case before my lords, then you are one. That's only purely on the question of merits. And we were quite impatient to see the patience of my lords in deciding the <laughs> cases, the Amazing. time you are taking to decide the issue, convincing the losing party to see that you don't have a case. It's really great. Uh, and it's a sad day for us. And we wish a very healthy life in future. Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai. Yes, my lord, uh, we have uh, seen my lords as uh, a wonderful judge and with a very present hearing to each and every member of the bar. Other than this, my lord, uh, my lord has a great quality of thinking. He can uh, sing better than many of the, our SCBA participants. He largely participated in two singing uh, things and largely performed wonderfully. We all are fond of that, my lord, and my lord, I wish all the best for your future endeavors, my lord. That's, uh... From the abundance of my heart, I should my Lord thank you a lot because my Lord, having known your Lordship, my Lord, since your Lordship stays as a lawyer, Lord, my Lord, just as you said, Lord, I've got this. He worked so hard and he used to identify Lord, the young talents in the bar and encourage them consistently to perform. Lord, I must thank your Lordship, Lord, with folded hands. Had it not been for your lordship's consistent encouragement, probably a first generation lawyer like me would have never made it to the Supreme Court. Obliged. Mr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Singhvi, Dr. Abhishek Singhvi. Well, it's, uh, I, I must apologize. I intended to be there, but I'm not there. That's my great regret. I can only say, Melis, that we are having a huge asset loss today. I can remember. The Uttarakhand matter, which I argued for very long, I'm not talking of any of its other overtones, but here was a judge who would come to court in the morning and say, what do you make of sentence five at page 987 of Bombay? He was intellectually so immersed that he would read Bombay the previous night and put questions the next day about the various facets. That quality and the additional quality that to the best of his ability and understanding, he only decides on the merits of what he sees. And no other degree of anything can affect him. I think that's a very, very remarkable thing. And I think we will all miss this sterling person. We wish him well, and we hope for the best. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vijay Hansaria. You. I must share one of my experiences with my Lord Justice Joseph. It's the most difficult thing when the judge says in the beginning, no, 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 there is nothing. But <laughs> At the end, you can persuade your lordship, my lord. In a small matter regarding a police officer, the lordship said it's atrocious. You cannot, we have to send him to jail, not only this, but I could persuade any your lordship, you are pleased to issue notice, my lord. It has been a great, remarkable thing for the honorable judges that they are open to uh, persuasion till the order, orders are passed. We will be extremely missing honorable justice, Joseph. Well, the Indian Supreme Court is looked upon with the highest respect outside the country also when your lordship are given the judgment in each matter. 
you know, to support all over the world. And your lordship the status of being so high. And my lord, I uh, endorse the statement of and that Hanoi that your lordship was ready to come back. We have seen his lordship uh, singing a song for the victims of uh, life in Kerala. Sometime uh, then his lordship joined here. And then he has requested not to record it. They sang a song in Hindi very beautifully. We wish you a lot of all the best. Brother Joseph. Brother Joseph. Yes. Oh, Mr. Manavi. Well, I don't know. We have a record on the card system. We share the same views as written by my great friends. And there are so many sweet memories of my heart to my heart when we were appearing for my heart. So, at this lecture, my Lord, I pray to Almighty that your Lordship may have peaceful, healthy, and prosperous retirement life. Uh, Brother Joseph, uh, I have the signal honor of presiding over the ceremonial court farewell, but it is also coupled with nostalgia and sadness. Nostalgia because Joseph and I are childhood friends. Joseph was the first person who became my friend when I shifted to Delhi in August 1972, years and years ago. I'll be speaking more of that in the afternoon when we have the formal SCBA farewell. But today in the morning when we were having tea over the welcome for the new judges, one of my colleagues who would be next in line this morning for the farewell asked us whether I was being partial to Justice Joseph in the Collegium, to which Justice Joseph, straightforward and down to earth that he is, said no on the Collegium. He was absolutely dispassionate. But I can then also, of course, confess that outside the court and the Collegium, uh, there's a sense of nostalgia about our childhood and the times that we spent together. But the Joseph and I shared the bench during the COVID-19 pandemic. And it was like we could read each other's minds. I remember particularly a very interesting case about uh, the stoppage of imports from a neighboring country. And the intricate question was, what is the date at which a notification is actually taking effect? Yeah. And that depended. And as it so happened, Brother Justice Nasima was arguing the matter before us. So it's <laughs> all three of us are on the bench together, not virtually, but physically. Uh, we found ourselves on the same page about the case before us so on so many occasions. Uh, as in that case, Brother Joseph found an authority from an old authority from the Madras High Court, which I then cited in my judgment. It's always been a pleasure to share the bench with you. I hear from the young members of the bar that they look forward to appearing before Justice Joseph because he is unfailingly patient with them. If I wanted to meet Brother Joseph, particularly after I took over as the Chief Justice of India in November 2022, typically at 4.30, my Asha would tell me, Joseph Sahib, abhi court mein baithe hai, court chal rahi hai. So true of you. Uh, Brother Joseph's expertise on matters ranging from commercial law to constitutional law will be missed. You've left behind and you leave behind a great sense of continuity, which we inherited from your own distinguished father, Justice K.K. Matthew. And uh, I know that you've left behind, as you depart from the court of the judge, a huge collection of friends, both on and off the bench. So we thank you for all your work as a judge of the Supreme Court. And this is just to tell you, in terms of the large audience today, of how widely you've been appreciated by the bar something which the bench as well shares. May I now request Justice Joseph to say a few words. Honorable Chief Justice, Mr. Chief, my learned brother, Justice Matsuma, Attorney General, Solicitor General, President of the CBA, of his other um, office bearers, and my dear friends. At this incredible moment in the life of any judge, we know from the day you are appointed, you have to retire. And therefore, you think that it's factored in and um, you are ready for it. But there's an incredible moment, the sense that it, uh, life is starting a new form. I really do not know what 
is the track that I will pick. Um, blessed are those who give and blessed are those who receive, it is said in the gospel. All that you have said, I take it with a generous thing you saw it. I think it all comes from the bottom of your hearts more than from your minds. And it's customary. And I'll be very naive if I took it at face value. But at the same time, I pocket it. I become free. Um, I am really grateful to for all the things that you have said and see the bar and the bands, two sides of the same coin, the not repeated, the planet, but it's really so. Because without the assistance of a bar, which is sufficiently learned, learned and experienced, this sport, which is at the uh, top of the pyramid of uh, the judiciary, cannot render justice to the common man. Therefore, the uh, assistance of the bar is of the greatest importance. And um, I'm so happy that uh, I have been able to receive the assistance from the bar in each and every case. And as to whether I have made, done anything, it, it is the better to you to foster it. Because today we are uh, living at this moment more in the in the hearts and not in the minds. Um, therefore, thank you for all that you have said, and perhaps for what you have not said. No. Yes. Yes. Instructions for the uh, instructions my lord. Instructions late last night. If my lords may give me the uh, leave to file my vakalata in the box, we'd also like to put a short reply on the box. There are certain very grave allegations. Actually, but you know, this is the transcription by the siblings of the deceased wife of the respondent. Yes. There are two children who study in Bangalore. So we have to transfer this from Gurugram to Bangalore. Very well, my lords may just allow me to put in my reply because there are grave allegations against me, my lords. I'm alcoholic, drunkard. Ma'am, what we'll do is that we will say that the, uh, the transfer petition, our order in the transfer petition uh, is, uh, has, has nothing to do with the allegations. And we'll say that we are not expressing any opinion on the allegations. And we'll only say that we are transferring it because the two children are studying, they're minor, they're studying in Bangalore and their mother has passed away. Yes, my lords. And also that I have not been allowed to meet them, my lords. That you can pursue you know, your remedy yes. under the, uh, that will clarify. So we'll say the transfer petition is by the siblings of the deceased wife of the respondent. Oh, okay. Stop. Uh, they seek transfer of the petition under the guardianship and wards, guardians and wards act filed by the respondent in the family court at Gurugram, in the family court at Bangalore. Stuff. Uh, the basis for the we are, we are inclined to allow the transfer petition. 
since uh, there are two children uh, of uh, the respondent and the deceased spouse uh, who are studying in Bangalore. And we'll stop. The children are about 10 and 11 years. 10, about 10 and 11 years old. 11 and 10 years old. We'll stop. Next. Uh, let the council appearing on behalf of the respondent state that there are certain allegations in the petition which are not admitted, which are denied. We'll stop. Uh, we clarify that while we are allowed, we are, while we are inclined to allow the transfer petition, comma, we are not dwelling on any of the allegations contained in the petition. Good stop. My lords, the I... transfer petition is primarily allowed on the ground of the welfare of the money. What are the Good stop. The transfer petition is, uh, is accordingly allowed by transferring the proceedings pending before the family court at Gurugan, the family court at Bangalore. Into brackets, so number that. My lords would give me the liberty to appear virtually. The petitioner or the respondent would be at liberty to appear virtually and before this. So my lords, if I could be allowed to meet the children because I'm not even allowed to talk and to them. Can, or... And you can apply I, I uh, before the competition. Item 7. Right. Is the transfer petition by the husband, right? He says he's mentally disabled. He mentally disabled. Because in this case, even the wife resides in Rajasthan. He's also in Jaipur. She resides with the elder brother. That's the clarity. Even the court matter because she's speaking. Uh, is she appearing? Who's appearing for her? She's appearing for her. Service is complete. Yeah. But Sorry, If you're mentally disabled, the client is mentally uh, disabled. The certificate is also there. But you want to transfer the DV Act proceedings, uh, you know? This is going to be there. And you know, the thing is that now you want this to be transferred from uh, Gurgaon to Jaipur. Yes, in the DV Act proceeding, the witnesses will all be there in, uh, in Haryana. In fact, the parties are residing in Rajasthan throughout. The wife is still in Rajasthan. And she stays with the elder brother. Mother. That was the grounds for divorce. In fact, in fact, there are two children who are not born out of the wedlock. And why don't you pursue? Why don't you appear in the video conferencing platform uh, before the court at Google? The alternative, I will take mother. So just one. Question. That's what we'll do because you know otherwise it'll be very harsh on her. And that too, expertly. So we'll say that uh, we we are, we are we are we are not inclined to transfer. Because if I will just put in one more aspect, mother. Yes. He is seeking attachment of properties. The properties are also in Jaipur. And the Gurgaon court also observes, my lord, page 66, that the proceedings will have to be transferred because all the properties for attachment are in Jaipur. Yes. Page 66, my lord, my kind here. If I may read, my lord, all the properties mentioned in the list are located in Jaipur and cannot be attached to the court at Gurugram. And the execution may have to be transferred to proceedings under section 421 CRPC. But without her, we don't want to ex parte transfer these proceedings, you know, because take dusty service. Take dust, take the dust. and serve her. Then we once she chooses to not to come, then we will The report indicates that service is complete. We have the view that it would be appropriate to make one more effort to serve the respondent dusty. Next up, dusty permitted. List on, we'll keep it keep it in, uh, in July. In fact, previously also I take instruction from one time. They said dusty actually a problem because the elder brother, they, they, they are at other So, all right, don't say dusty. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, service okay. should be effected on the respondent through the uh, through the court concern. So the court no, concerned that good now. And, uh, that has been done. Service has been effected through the trial court in Gurugram. Oh, it has been done. It's already done. Because we sought service on. What we will do is that we will not we will permit you to appear through video conferencing in Gurugram. All right, that's what we'll do. It's a very hard case, well, otherwise... I know, but look at it from her point of view. The moment we transfer it, the, it's the end of the matter for her. She will never be able to pursue it in uh, anywhere she's, else. She's there. And that's, that's what I, you're I said saying. it, my love. Mm -hmm. see very clearly, my love. Every bit of uh, yours that she is writing in Japan. I will take it. Right. All right. Leonard right. 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 Council appearing on behalf of the petitioner states that though the respondent has instituted the proceedings under the Domestic Violence Act, Kuranamiko, in Burgaon, 
uh, the petition, the, the respondent, the first respondent, as a matter of fact, resides in Jaipur. Full stop. We permit the first respondent to file an affidavit together with documentary material, if any, indicating the place of residence of the first respondent as stated above. Full stop. List on. We keep it on. July. Item 8. No, this is a petition by for restitution of conjugal rights. Right? My Lord. Uh, DV proceedings are pending at Bandra in Mumbai, my Lord. Already they have been served. They have been served. Yes. Okay. Yes. Services. I'm grateful. Item 9. In item 9, I am appearing for the husband and the respondent here. And Lord Chief, the uh, this uh, mediation proceedings uh, were failed. Wife demanded 60 lakhs, and my client is able to convince up to 20 lakhs. In the morning, I spoke to him. So 25, okay. 20, 25 I can manage. I will try. They are saying up to 25 lakhs is what they can offer as a permanent alimony. I will take instruction. I will discuss with my client also. Lord Chief, both are government doctors. They both are settled. She is working. Where are they both based? Uh, she is working. She is working in Sikandarabad, UP, and she sought transfer petition to Ghaziabad from uh, Rajasthan. And where is your client based? She is in, uh, in he's Rajasthan. He is no, no, Lord. He is in Uttar Pradesh, Lord. Like to ask the respective clients to come to court next time. Is it possible? I, I will ask my client, Lordship, no problem. After summer vacation. What about you? Will she come here? Because they are offering about 25 lakhs as permanent alimony. Do you think it's talkable? If it's not talkable, that's uh, we need to push you here. And we'll uh, take a call on the, the mediation, Lordship. Petitioner Me? is very clear well. about since she said that he is his father expenditure. It was on around more than 80 lakhs. <laughs> Therefore, she So then we'll transfer it, I think. We'll transfer it. We'll transfer it. Lordship, the only problem is that she has got the delay tactics. Lordship, then maybe no, please. She's to... suffering from renal cell carcinoma. Lordship, now she is recovered. out of Rajiv Gandhi uh, cancer research. Yeah, Lordship, now she is recovered. She is working yeah, in government uh, or hospital as a doctor. So, Lordship, then kindly maybe please to direct the uh, district court to uh, expedite the matter. And it is at this stage. That will do. Okay. Uh, at this stage of evidence. Evidence of the wife. Yes, ma'am. We will do that. Okay. Deeply yeah. obliged, Lordship. Item 10. Please. Item 10. Please, Lordship. Okay. Time for petitioner. Seeking transfer of divorce case from Baraj UP to Baraj to Kalkar uh, And you have filed in the DB Act, which is pending uh, yes, in yes, Delhi. Lord. Yes, Lord. Before the Mahila Court. Shadra Mediation. Uh, mediation. We will allow this. So great. Thank you. Uh, we are all assembled here in the ceremonial court farewell to my very distinguished colleague, Justice Ajay Rastogi. Uh, may I request the let me return general for India, Mr. R. Venkatrami, to uh, say a few words. The, the searching questions and the serious demeanor, but immediately accompanied by a disarming smile. And uh, what did we do, sir? I think we all learned by the qualities of a great guy put on this court. And uh, these three qualities are there in abundance. I think uh, we not only learn, but we are part of uh, the stream of justice. And we are greatly honored that uh, this institution had you here. And I have so many personal recollections. Many of us have personal recollections day in and day out of how we have benefited by your presence here. But one important uh, personal benefit, I should say, your intervention in the Amrapali matter has paved the way for a very long and commendable journey for us. And I'm sure you'll be remembered by thousands of home buyers. In whose hearts, you will stay for a long, long time as an architect of their peace and comfort. And I'm sure I will also write one day about it in my own memorable way. 
and say that this is part of our life. Mr. Solicitor General. Would I share the views of the learned AG? Lord, three facts come to my mind, my Lord, while we be the farewell to your lordships. One, my Lord, the ease of arguments, irrespective of the age of the lawyer, my Lord, whether he is young or senior, my Lord, we were all at ease before your lordships. Second, my Lord, smile on your lordship's face, my Lord, throughout the day. And third, the problem which we faced because we have the lordship's habit of reading everything, Many a times, my Lord, those of us who didn't have the Lord, uh, habit of reading every page were caught, uh, Lord, uh, on guard. But uh, your Lordships have never, my Lord, permitted that income in, my Lord, in the way of our clients getting justice, my Lord. The Lordships' absence would really be felt and will be missed. I wish your Lordships a very healthy and a very enjoyable life again. Mr. Well, I thought uh, when judges retire from the vacation, they, they should not retire prematurely. And uh, probably we should have a benefit of a special venture, three honorable judges, and we can have more memorable time. <laughs> I can certainly do that. And I'll take the permission of uh, my <laughs> distinguished colleague's uh, spouse that, you know, she should that he can be sitting in court for the remaining part of his uh, tenure. I'm sure he will be more than happy to do that, but uh, Mr. Agarwal? Uh, our good wishes to Justice Rastogi. Justice Rastogi has been the president, undisputed leader of Rajasthan High Court Bar Association for 10 years. So after retirement, you will like that when he has a training, he has taught the lawyers and the teachers and the uh, judges in different parts, so he should be associated with our Supreme Court Bar Association because he had all his experience and he, he should help us. Uh, Dr. Singhvi? Uh, uh, as I said, I regret not being there. Justice Rastogi brings with us and takes away a little bit of that fragrance from my home state, Rajasthan. He was so immersed in the bar, so active in the bar as president, that many of us believe that he would not take up judgeship. But uh, having taken up judgeship and been in the same court, he exhibited a remarkable even-handedness. It was very difficult having spent so long in the bar and so actively in the bar. I only want to add one thing. His, one of his most uh, obvious outstanding qualities is a very great degree of pragmatism. In every case I've done before him here in Rajasthan, he has exhibited a result-oriented approach. How to get on with the matter, how to dispose of the matter, how to get a result in the matter. I think sometimes that is very important. He has an eye on the clock, he has an eye on the calendar, and he manages that extremely well. We wish him very well, we will miss him, but I'm sure uh, we are going to see more and more of him soon. Uh, Mr. Ansaria? We're extremely grateful to Honorable Justice Rastogi. All the members of the bar have said, Good things, my lord. Only one demands we have remained with you that we could not provoke your lordships to raise your lordship's voice, taste your impatience. Your lordship have been very, very patient. We bar has tried to lord make your lordship impatient, but your lordship have never become. Wish your lordship very, very healthy and happy life and a very fruitful life. Uh, Mr. Gopal Shankar, if I can start with a complaint, which is that very often when seniors used to appear before Justice Rastogi. And if they were not there for some reason, reason because of the Paso, he would say no Paso and make the junior bar happy. And on multiple occasions, I've been more guilty. And I've seen the way he's encouraged juniors, associates, AORs on a consistent basis. I think it was fantastic for the bar, for the junior bar, to be encouraged in that fashion and step up to the plate and do well. That's a sense that we get from judges who want to be the institution rather than just merely educated. I think that's huge and exemplary contribution that judges can bring. In the 70s, I understand that the court we wouldn't be granted to pass over, so I know that so many opportunities came to the new year. And I think that's worth replicating. I do praise Lord Justice Ratogi for our head personal loss, but I think that was fantastic. Uh, the second thing is your patience 
and you will definitely try and bring solution to the joint of the same thing what he said. You would, many cases, when we were being adversarial, he would find the medium, and he would like to provide for mediation and solution. A lot of people don't know about multiple locations where everybody went off happier because he pushed towards the solution and he got that. Thirdly, your concurring judgment in the election commission constitution bench, but just as Joseph Penn, the majority in you, that concurring is so, so well written. I think it's, it's a human, uh, I think, example that people must follow about how a small contribution can still go to an enhancing the jurisprudence of court. And then finally, I think all of us really stand with gratitude that you are part of the provision that gave us Mr. Vishwanathan and the judge. So, very, very grateful for this. Mr. You are the one who has seen you growing from childhood. It has been a wonderful journey, both as a lawyer and a judge. And the pleasantness has been the hallmark all throughout. And I wish you a wonderful time ahead. It has been, uh, it's, it's a matter of pride and privilege to, to be called a friend and be a sister. Yes. I am a. I could not stop myself from praising Justice Rastogi as I am seeing what I am, what I felt, what I am realizing right from 1978 as a benchmate, as classmate when we took admission in Rajasthan University. And I further praise how successfully he continued with the legacy of his maternal and uncle, Radha Kishan Rastogi. He was Advocate General in Rajasthan and thereafter. Uh, Untimely sudden demise of his father, uh, Harish Chandra Rastogi, he was a prominent lawyer at Rajasthan High Court. I will certainly miss him. And whatever qualities described here, nothing is new. Right from 1978, I am observing the same from except acquiring knowledge and experience. He is with the same humbleness, same qualities. I really miss him and I wish personally his uh, bright forthcoming days. Colonel Bala? Yes, Colonel. Well, it's, uh, to be very honest, my lords, I knew very little about uh, Honorable Justice Rastogi before my lords got elevated here. My lords, but this brief draft, I would say, has been tremendous. Personally, my lords have influenced me a lot. And my lords always, always, in fact, Whenever we have appeared before your court, your my lords have made it so light and the ambience and as well as my lords, we have learned a lot from actually the way my lords have conducted the courts. My lords, we wish you a very, very most happy retired life and with God's grace, my lords, we should think of health and my lords, the best of happiness. Um, I'm on the same page as uh, uh, learning attorney general for India on Amravali's uh, Amravati's matter. And uh, I would just say one thing that uh, it was very difficult to win the uh, battle of wits with uh, Justice Sastogi as he would come in and out of the situation with greater ease. And he was always more clever than, the, than almost all of us. And uh, we will really miss your lots. And uh, we will uh, uh, actually uh, miss the laughter and the good that was there in the atmosphere with your lordships on the bench. And we wish you all the best in the future and all the other battles of which you are going to play. And on behalf of the Army College of the Association, I wish you all the best and a healthy and prosperous life and many new battles. First, say two things about the lordship. So, first, firstly, your lordship even handed approach towards the younger one. Irrespective of the senior cast of the on the other side, you always felt that we'll get a fair hearing and a fair outcome. And plus, secondly, your loss uh, uh, love for the liberty. If there was any bail or anticipatory bail matter which got listed in your lordship's court, we were all immediately with us extremely happy about it. Everybody wanted first matters to be listed in your lordship's court. So we are extremely grateful. Lord. Wish your lordship the best of times for us moving forward. Mr. Sadat, the way. Thank you, sir. It's a sad day for what you said. I'm It's a happy day for some of us. We meet your option on the world course. Now we will be friends outside the court and we wish our lordships all the very best. Thank you.
Brother Rastogi draws immense inspiration from his father, Sri Harishchandra Rastogi, who was also an eminent civil lawyer in the same court. I recently got to know that as soon as Justice Rastogi enrolled as an advocate before the Rajasthan High Court in March 1982, he got a brief on the very next day. He was able to successfully argue the brief before the High Court and secure relief for his client. This marked a turning point in his career, should I say, and the turning point in Brother Astogi's career came very soon, on the next day itself. Because he soon established himself as a prominent authority on civil law, service law, labor matters, among other things. Here at the Supreme Court, Brother Astogi, we have often relied on your expertise in complex and highly nuanced service matters, among various other aspects of litigation. Indeed, there is a sense of relief and assurance when we see your name in the roster handling these cases or your name as the author of decisions regarding these issues. Brother Astogi and I sat for a very long period of time uh, in 2019 and 2020, and we shared both on and off the bench a very interesting time. Uh, it was a sheer pleasure to sit with Justice Astogi and to share so many apart things apart from just the law that we talk of in the court. Uh, today, I get an opportunity to sit with him once again. Uh, Brother Astogi has been a source of immense support and strength in the Collegium. As Mr. Shankarnarayan said, we've just marked the entry of two distinguished judges into our court. We did that in uh, virtually an afternoon of sitting, and we have those judges appointed to the court barely three days after the recommendation was made. Uh, Justice Rastogi was and has always been a very great ally, not only for me as a judge, the Chief Justice of India, for, but for the Supreme Court. Uh, and we are deeply grateful to you for your service, for your commitment and your dedication, Brother Rastogi. May I now request Justice Rastogi to say a few words. First of all, I'm very thankful for the words that you have spoken for me. I don't know whether I deserve or not, but I think without any really And I put this question to Michael. Uh, that yeah. your retiring day or once particular day comes in later. I will keep on thinking to me that no, I'm not retiring. I'm limited by office. So I will give this discussion that if you don't put retirement pay in significant office. Retirement by understanding is something different. When you go to the different stage when you're leaving everything in your profession. I've been in profession for 41 years. I served in various ways as a president of the bar, a lawyer, a judge. So I've seen different capacity. And today also I feel since my age is going to 65 years, I've never done all this. But still, I have retired. So I'll continue to be in profession. And profession doesn't mean that you're a lawyer. In profession, you can serve the society in various ways. And those ways are open. But I say that they, they may be provincial the constitution that I can't uh, uh, turn back to the profession. If there can be a pooling period, and you permit me to come up to the is over. I'll be the first time to join. So I can tell you one thing very frankly here. I enjoyed my profession the best of my life. Those who have been with me in profession, those who work in my chamber, those who are my other colleagues, are not a single day other. 
I don't know whether I have enjoyed here or not. But if you ask me to select either the one, then I'll go the early and not later. So my request, once again, I have to thank you to all of you and God bless all and keep your these soft words coming on me all the time. And thank you much, too. very much. Thank you. And I'll take greetings with me. <laughs> One five zero one for judgment. We have accepted large number of recommendations of the SNJPC. Apart from that, we have also collated the principles on the basis of which the earlier judgments were given accepting the recommendations with respect to the district judiciary and uh, these relate to principles that we have mentioned after the council submission relating to uniformity in designations and service conditions separation of powers and comparison with political executive it's an important aspect we have also dealt with the independence of the district judiciary as part of the basic structure. Judicial independence and access to justice fair ensures implementation of part three of the constitution and equivalence of judicial functions of district judiciary and higher judiciary. We have also given a list of recommendations that have been accepted. Primarily, we have dealt with recommendations of pay and thereafter, Pension, gratuity, and other things. And uh, the consequential directions are important. I'll just read that one paragraph. Ultimately, the effect of acceptance of the recommendations of this court is that necessary amendments must be carried out in service rules of judicial officers across all ju jurisdictions. It is thus directed that the high courts and the competent authorities, wherever applicable, bring the rules in conformity with the recommendations accepted by this court above within a period of three months compliance affidavits be placed on record by the high courts the states and the unions within four months in the case of payment of arrears of pay this court had by orders on 27 july 22 and 18 1 23 already directed that all arrears of pay be cleared by 30th of june 2023 in this regard it is directed that compliance affidavit must be filed by all states and union territories by 30th of July 2023, that the areas of pay have been positively credited into the accounts of the concerned officers. The revised rates of pensions, which have been approved by this court, shall be payable by 1st of July 2023, 
for the payment of arrears of pension, additional pension, gratuity, and other retiral benefits as well, following the orders of 27.722 and 18.123, it is directed that 25% will be paid by 31st of August 23, another 25% by 31st of October 23, and the remaining 50% by 31st of December 23. We will list this case. Lordship, 17 July at 3 p.m. We can keep Lordship. Mm -hmm. On 17 July 2023 at 3 p.m. for further compliance on pay and pension, on which this court will take up the recommendation on allowances. Come to join us on this. Please. This is the tra it's a uh, transfer petition by the in laws of the respondents, right? Yes, I'm appearing for the wife, I'm appearing for the respondents. I'm objecting to this petition. They have said that you live in Delhi, is it true? No, they say that you are a resident no. of Malvi and Agar because your father is the president of the tax union. Uh, so, they long, long time back, the entire family has moved to Punjab. The children in laws who have been abandoned by the family are staying with the mother. They are studying in Punjab. They are even contesting elections for the Punjab. For the petitioner? Yes, ma'am. Lord, can we transfer her DV Act proceedings? Lord, may, may I just make a submission? She is very much, first of all, she is very much staying here in Delhi. And this. But tell us one thing if she was in Delhi, why would she file it in Rupnagar in the Punjab? Because she be so loves me. Fighting her own. Uh, but if she allow, I'll just make one submission. Her cancer treatment is going on near Punjab. But she would have gone to AIDS then, not to AIDS Punjab to get her cancer treatment. But she's a cancer. Who the first respondent is undergoing cancer treatment? These mothers. Look, these four petitioner. Two are correct that she is undergoing cancer treatment. Look, kindly see, we have filed the medical records. And she is, even if she is going through medical treatment, AIMS ah, is nearby. Right. Staying in. All right. It, yes. I don't know. But then we withdraw it. We have a bit. We are withdrawing it. All day, you are withdrawing. All this. Yes, we withdraw it. Yes, sir. Okay. Item 12. My laws are appeal for the respondent husband. Who is the My laws are the same thing. I would just say we have no objection to the transfer. It will be transferred to somewhere in Delhi because that's where the wife is now, the petitioner. Who is appearing for the petitioner? Who is the letter? Then we'll. 13. Great. The petition is for restitution of conjugal rights filed by the respondent. This has a nine month old baby. This is just one side of the story, my lord. The mother in law is expert, father in law is 17. You're for the respondent. Yes, I'm appearing for the respondent. We'll allow it. She has a nine month old baby. Where should she defend it? Lord, I want to uh, further time to file my counter in this. No, it's all right. Oh. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. Item 14. My lord, in that case, my lord, I would like to withdraw my petition before the family court. What you do? Please. That you do. We'll transfer it. You can always withdraw withdraw it. That's a statement may be taken, my lord. You can withdraw it over there. You withdraw it. No need to carry. Because then it, I have to come to withdraw it over here to transfer it. Uh, no, you can withdraw it immediately. Once because the transfer. All that we just say. Uh, the uh, the uh, this is seal number thirteen. Huh? Yes. Learned counsel appearing on behalf of the respondent states that the. Uh, petition for restitution of conjugal rights, which has been filed before the family court at Sikandrabad, uh, would be withdrawn. Uh, this shall be done positively within a period of one week. In view of the above statement, come on the transfer petition does not survive and is accordingly disposed of. I'm not That's it. Item 14. 
My lord, petitioner is a lady residing in Gazia. Oh, it's a criminal complaint criminal filed against you and your husband. Yes, my lord. That he following data and you know uh, my, you have set up my lord. Uh, competing uh, sole proprietary concern. Now let me transfer to my proceeding. Page 18, Parath. My lord, kindly see page 18, Parath. <laughs> The documents filed on record relating to the email ID of accused number one were not clear on the aspect of theft of data. That yeah. is on merits. My lord, well, we not try. I don't have Yes, your lordship. Uh, may I further respond? And for the respondent number three, you are. For under section 498A. Yes, yes. your lordship. Away for the state. I am for the petitioner. I am for the respondent. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you for? For the state. For the state. They have joined for the respondent, your lord. For the respondent number two, your lord. Both of you have joined together. <laughs> your lord, we have. Yeah. Why are you standing together? <laughs> your lord, sir, I'll No, no, no. That's all right. You should have to your Lordship, uh, the purpose of the transfer petition is to meet the end of the justice with a fair trial. You said that some the judge is a close yes. relative of her. Yes, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, uh, it is untrue. I have me, filed my I counter on that. Your Lordship, only thing was it was received late in the evening. I have filed, filed it online. On the right. Just, we, let's give her a chance. Page 235, Your Lordship. There, you there is a judge in charge of the trial. Yes, Your Lordship. The judge, there is uh, the, the 164 statement. This has been recorded by the judge who has gifted the jewelry to the uh, petitioner in the marriage. And there is a retired judge whose influence is. Who is doing the trial now? Yes, Your Lordship. The one who has gifted both, uh, the one, uh, Aarti Jha. She is the judge. She is taking the trial. And she is the one who is involved. You should apply for transfer from that judge, actually, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I appear for uh, the state. So a retired judge who is also a, a party to this. Yeah, and the witness. The judge is hearing the matter. Aarti Jha. Aarti Jha judge, yes, she has recorded 164 statement and she has added the sections 354. Why didn't you do this? You can move the district judge for transfer to another court within the same jurisdiction. Or you can move the high court for transfer to another district within the state. Your Lordship, the witnesses involved, everybody is politically connected. They are politicians. So the matter, the, some, some influence will come either from one district to another. The influence will be there. You can apply. Uh, you cannot transfer, especially it's a criminal case which is instituted by her. So we can, we can apply. We need not even say that. You can apply or should we say give her liberty if she wants to. Uh, we are not inclined to uh, explain the transfer petition for, uh, uh, for transfer of the criminal case instituted by the second respondent from Raipur to uh, Delhi. Full stop. However, uh, if the petitioner has any genuine apprehension in regard to the fairness of the trial, it would be open to her to move either the district judge for a district judge, or as the case may be, for the or the high court for. A transfer within the same district, or as the case may, or uh, to another district within the same state. You know, Ajay, you know, the 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 they have filed one questioning petition, and that is pending. That is pending. Next date is sixth of the sixteenth of the year. Fifteenth. You can join the BC. No so maybe we allow. You know, watch You know, watch him. Our presence will be recorded. Yes, yes. Our presence will be recorded. Mr. Mr. Attorney General. Now, do um, away. Today, I can be accused of a Madrasi bias. Pleasant, but <laughs> sad, uh, very, very sad duty of uh, I have to preside over this reference to bid farewell to uh, Ram Subramaniam, as a very distinguished colleague, good friend, and a judge of our court. May I request the learned attorney general to say a word? So well, I will reserve my evening uh, was on the merit of the great judge. A four year period being too small for him or too short for him <laughs> to make more indelible mark in this court. As I said I can be accused of a Madrasi bias because <laughs> we have sort of Madrasi connection. <laughs> but uh, beyond this court uh, engagement and his contribution within a very short period, present four years, there are other. Remarkable things this is done. A judge has grown with him, brought with him, and made it part and imprinted on 
the judicial process and uh, something leaves me speechless when i find that in a serial and what called a book called the uh, word hunt in tamil very difficult to translate it so easily and you have a person who participated in this process of word hunt compiled as a book and then and when we hold a, a life convict in a jail comes and receives the first copy of this uh, you know publication where the dais is shared by the honorable judge in something very remarkable and the same quality of enduring quality of being a humble human being he brought in i think in almost all the uh, days he has spent in his court and finally the cryptocurrency judgment will remain with us opening up new chapters of understanding the financial and economic dimensions of emerging laws in our country and when that judgment was cited repeatedly in the election the the demonetization case i think uh, we learned many things on how to read a judgment for the first time a new judgment opening up new chapters how to read a judgment we did it uh, with the uh, engagement of the ram subramanian together in the court the remarkable days and i'm sure uh, with his with his contribution in the court and is going to travel beyond we know that what he is likely to do not in any matter of office and things like that but his wide scholarship and erudition i'm sure he'll be a great asset to the nation uh, so solicitor general yes please lord uh, thinking that justice ramasubramaniam is leaving this institution my lord four things come to my mind lord. first Your lordship's very amiable nature. Nobody felt any element of hesitance in arguing before your lordship. Second, Lord, it is said that two senses, the humanity is uh, there is a diminishing quality, my lord, in two senses: a sense of humour and second, common sense. <laughs> For your lordships had both in abundance. but extraordinary common sense and a brilliant sense of humor which all of us would be third nobody could create a nuisance value in your lordship's court the lordships never took nonsense lying down and that quality is brute courage which is my lord required and nobody should my lord uh, tinker with the goodness of a judge you know that's what the message your lordships are leaving and fourth the energy which your lordships exhibited at 10 o'clock 10:30 and the smile on your lordships face at 10:30 remain the same even at 4 o'clock and if we happen to meet after 4 o'clock in some official function or so with the same energy level same smile and the same sense of Your lordships would really be missed. Of course, your lordships, my lord, we would keep on troubling my lords in whichever capacity your lordships would contribute. But your lordships, my lord, scholarship in subjects other than law, for example, Sanskrit scriptures, etc., would also, my lord, help the generations to come. I wish your lordships a very healthy life, a very peaceful life, and please continue to, my lord, uh, encourage us. thank you mr agarwal we fully endorse the views of honorable attorney general and solicitor general and i have the opportunity of appearing before lord sir when i was the additional advocate general of tamil nadu that time and here also the, he is so sober everybody we used to go but down the bar mr venkatraman what let me imitate Uh, the style of Nagar SG three things, <laughs> but Lord Rock has transcended three yugas and is worshipped even today because of two reasons: Satya and Dharma. Please allow us to call you fondly once. Justice Ra will remain in the hearts of the advocates, not only in Supreme Court across, because we cherish this as your values and core values in life. Preserving Satya and Dharma all throughout your judicial career. Two, your lordships have dispensed judgments across 
different branches of law, which most of the judges could have done. But your USP is not only that. Sometimes law and justice system requires innate cleverness, innate astuteness, very unique. You, are, you will be extremely courageous. You will use the tool of law. You will use the tool of satya and dharma and break path-breaking judgments in that area. To cite one is going to be that a judgment rendered a few days ago. I'm not going to, I, I'm not repeating what, what, what I say. Justice Nagamuthu, a lot retired judge of our court and a renowned classical criminal jurisprudence lawyer said, this PMLA judgment will get carved, chiseled in the history of citations and stay forever in the Indian jurisprudence on PMLA. The third, many here know only as a great judge, but at least in North India, your scholastic knowledge on our scriptures, he is considered to be a scholar among scholars in Ramayana in Tamil Nadu. Scholar among scholars. When he's invited for great debates on Ramayana, he's not invited as a ceremonial head because he's a judge of the Supreme Court. He's invited because he's respected as a scholar among scholars. So you will now be sharing your post-retirement time because he will chase you, sir, no doubt. But I think Kamban Karakams across the world would have booked you for the next few years also to dispense. You have a, you have a duty also to discourse on this legendary tradition of this great holy land. You are ultimately a man. You have said this to us as, as young lawyers. We have heard you when you said this in the bar as a judge. Nobody can make me angry. <laughs> because you have said that a man who is angry, he always shows a sign of losing. I don't want to lose in life. That's the spirit you should always keep winning in your life. Best prayers to you. The Advocate General uh, is also here. Yes, Advocate. Line, Mr. Shanmugasundaram. May I request you to say a few words? I'm very grateful for the opportunity given. Um, I know uh, Justice Ram Subramanian from the day he was he started his practice in the Madras High Court, and I have appeared him. I have appeared before him several occasions. Of all the occasions, I found that he knew more facts and law than me uh, <laughs> whenever I appeared, and such a thorough. Uh, judge is expected and is uh, his may his tribe increase but then uh, the other aspect i want to tell about uh, justice ram subram name is he's a great tamil scholar and i am i am a fan of his youtube uh, lectures speeches wherever he gives on ramayan and so the, uh, so many other tamil uh, literature and so with the, the judge with such a literary blend of mind, he is also expected. I wish him well. I uh, wish him uh, happiness, health, all through the life. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gopal Shankar, no, uh, I want to start, start by saying, saying my apologies that in the last three weeks, many of us have been reaching in this court. We did two extremely heavy matters in the last three weeks. Hmm. Most people would have just popped it off after vacation, especially when one of the sides decided to file a 3,000 page convenience compilation. It's most demoralizing when you walk into court and then just an officer says, page 1537, right? June 4, 1962. And you just don't know how he has figured out what is there on that page in such a short space. I mean, his intellect is massive, his capacity to work is immense. And what I have always been surprised by is for a gentleman whose first language was Tamil for the better part of his life, his felicity with the English language, how he could marshal facts and arguments and move them into a compelling judgment, distilling principles rather than taking out paragraphs. Is magnificent. I mean, it is a huge loss to the court in many, many respects. His patience, his wit, of course, has been touched upon. He would never lose an opportunity to crack one if we had, if we had it. His literary illusions, ranging from Shakespeare and Alexander the Pope, to some of the finest writers in uh, 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 domestic literature as well, 
are all embellishments to the quality of judgment writing in this sort. And of course, we know from Justice Ram Subramaniam from many, many accounts that all of us have heard about his expertise in the Tamil language. Uh, I remember Justice Nariman, after he stepped down once, he himself being an expert in comparative religions, once we were just talking about judges of the court, and he said, Justice Ram Subramaniam, typical Justice Nariman style, brilliant, brilliant, make this. So, I mean, we don't need uh, more people to replicate just that sentiment that we all have as such a north for the institution, but we just hope that you will continue in Delhi and we'll have the opportunity to meet you again very, very often. Grateful for everything that you've given us. Dr. Singhvi? Well, it's, uh, I think when uh, Justice Ramasubhram joined law and then the judiciary, there was a huge lost to several, several diverse vocations. His interest in interfaith surprises me. His knowledge of history never ceases to amaze me. He is a linguist par excellence or at least in linguistics. Most important, his raconteur's performance on the bench and off the bench. And above all, his one-line witticisms. We have been pestering him. I just told him yesterday that he must compile them. Uh, and not claim uh, trademark or copyright rights on that. Along with such great, diverse, versatile talent, he's always been unfailingly smiling, unfailingly courteous, and yet firm and fair. So we hope him, we wish him well. We only wish that uh, with his so many diverse, versatile interests, he also gets some rest in retirement. <laughs> yes, a uh, lot. Uh, uh, Justice Rama Subramaniam is very spiritual, so I want to make one appeal. Uh, in Agnipura, there are so many chapters on property laws, so many provisos are there. So like so many Purans, our ancient literature have so many law facts, provisos. So uh, if uh, uh, Lordship is giving uh, time on that and research, and that will be connected to these current laws, and we should not have a dependency on UK laws more. So our uh, ancient culture is very great, and Lordship have this spiritual place, and we are our Lordship in this meeting. Mr. Manoj Mishra. Just on behalf of the Advocate and Accord Association, Madam, he shared the same views as he said by Mr. Senior Madam. He prayed to our party that Lordship have post retirement, healthy, healthy, and prosperous. Tanil Balaji. Yes, Tanil. Well, like they say, my lords, the judges speak through the judgments. My lords, you are one person, my lords, you have spoken your mind in all the judgments that you have delivered in this court. My lords, apart from that, I would say, my lords, a person who wants integrity and honesty, that's your alma, my lords. In fact, you are second to none. As well as whatever I have learned, that your integrity and honesty is par excellence. And we actually, my lords, learned a lot during the court proceedings. And also, as everybody had said, my lords, your skills in literature, and especially in Tamil, my lords, Irukural and Kamaramayana, etc., my lords, is of a great, my lords, with authority, my lords, one can say. We wish, my lords, a very pleasant innings, and my lords, and with great health and happiness to all. Dear family, Dear family. Council Association, we are wishing uh, to happy, healthy, and prosperous in our lives. And I also wish to the family members they will have the company of Justice uh, Ramaswamy. 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 So I again wish to happy, healthy, but I see in the court, uh, every advocate feel familiar by doing argument. Just uh, Justice Subramaniam never angry with the junior lawyers and any other advocates. Thank you. My Lord, the uh, Honorable Justice Thomas Subramaniam, apart from being the knowledge, knowledge and expert of Tamil language, he has written so many uh, important words. He has written also created some new words. He has written some articles and so many uh, other achievements, what he achieved other than the legal sapphire. I will uh, mention one incident when there was a function 
and lordship came to uh, the president of the bar and he said that he was wearing multi color shirt lordship said that this uh, color is very nice very nice shirt after some time again lordship came he said you know this shirt was actually uh, one villain popular villain was wearing this shirt immediately he changed his shirt after within 5 minutes he went to his car and changed the shirt so this is a kind of bit of my lords uh, actually we have seen so many occasions i wish very happy and prosperous life my lord and best regard to all the family members uh brother uh, justice ram subramanian members of the bar let me sing ram because that's how i have always referred to him on the bench 38 years ago in july of 1985 i entered the courtroom where my father presided over for the first time and the last time on the day that he was bidding farewell to his court looking at brother ram's family here i'm sure that they will join us now in uh, really understanding in a very profound way why he is worshiped at the court at the altar of this court i met just ram subramanian for the first time in tamil nadu bhavan when i was the chief justice of the ilavad high court and his dear friend and chief justice just sanjay paul and i were working on something together ram's humble persona immediately stuck to me but it was only after he was elevated as a judge of the supreme court that i realized that he is in every which way truly a multifaceted and multi-talented judge and human being alongside his day job he carries with so much of aplomb he pursues other passions in sanskrit carnatic music in tamil literature and really did a week go by when i didn't get a whatsapp forward from ram not just of something brilliantly evocative in carnatic music but something equally evocative in traditional maharashtrian abangs so he is not confined by borders whether of nation or of state i shared the bench with justice ram subramanian for a short period of time first in 2022 but we more than made up for the lost interaction between court proceedings outside the court hall my interactions with my distinguished colleague have always left me pondering if there is anything at all that is left for justice ram subramanian to read because he's read everything now let out a secret i've been struggling to persuade brother ram to take up the post of the chairpersonship of any tribunal that is available at the can actually select but he has declared to me that he has this will to be a free citizen untrammeled by judicial office but i've never forgotten my days as a persistent persistent member of the bar and i continue to persist in the hope that he will agree to my earnest appeals to him because we do not want ram to be away physically he'll of course be close to our hearts these are relationships which are forged for a lifetime and beyond but i only earnestly hope for myself and for the institution that he will not for a change but as usual accept the appeal of his chief justice thank you brother ram for your service to the indian judiciary this ram subramanian has an innate ability to separate the grain from the chaff whenever i've sat with him on the bench i've found that he really makes a note he scribble a few words but he's spot on even before the lawyer has entered into that area he'll whisper to the colleague with whom he is sitting on something which is really the essence of the case and something which lies beyond perhaps even the pages and the dark print of the case but above all the court halls would be less lively without your jests and humor i think one of the reasons why our days went off so well uh, in your company was because in the coffee lounge then you entered you would always bring laughter and joy and you carried your learning and you've always carried your learning with such a sense of humility which is truly the hallmark of an elevated soul a soul which knows so much but doesn't pride itself for knowing so much i think that really 
truly sums that uh, up for my very distinguished brother. I can go on and consume the entire entirety of the lunchtime, but I have a lot to speak in the evening. So I'll reserve that for the evening when we meet at the SCBA uh, farewell uh, function. May I now request Brother Ram to say a few words. Where is Kavita? Uh, Secretary uh, Chief Justice. My brother Justice Lassimo, a learned attorney general, a learned uh, solicitor general in Adjunctia, the learned additional solicitor general, the president of uh, the Supreme Court Bar Association, and other office bearers, the president and office bearers of uh, Swara, the learned advocate general of Tamil Nadu, who is, uh, has joined us online, the learned advocate general of uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh who are physically present here, one in hiding and one in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Respected uh, senior advocates, because nobody escapes my attention. <laughs> uh, my dear members of the bar, uh, my friends who have uh, traveled from Chennai uh, to attend this uh, function, my family members. Um, it's really a humbling experience uh, that so many of you have spoken good words. Normally, a farewell is marked either by the retiring judge shedding tears or one of the speakers shedding tears. But uh, I am not capable of shedding tears because I always permeate happiness. The result is that none of you will also shed tears on my departure. In fact, when um, Honorable Justice K.V. Vishwanathan was sworn, I saw one of his uh, former colleagues uh, virtually in tears. So I called her and asked her, uh, why were you weeping? She said, uh, they were tears of joy. Then I said, I have a worry. Suppose on my farewell, if you weep, I will not know whether they are tears of joy. Oh, yes, of sorrow. Then, then, uh, then lawyer said, all right, I will avoid attending your uh, But one thing I know, when all of you say good words on an occasion like this, that none of you is in the witness box. Therefore, you are not on oath. Only a person who is on oath is supposed to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> and in parallel addresses, it is legitimate. Even our Shastras say that whenever you give a farewell address, you keep truth outside the gate. <laughs> um, I think all members of the bar who praised me, they praised me for my expertise in Ramayana, my court craft, the humor, etc. I was just reminded of uh, what happened in the case of one of the former chief justices in Madras High Court. He was a great scholar in uh, Ramayana and Tamil literature by himself. So on his farewell, everybody praised him as a scholar in uh, Tamil language, Ramayana, etc. And additionally, they said he also wrote such a good gentleman. All this is uh, done. Um, the Honorable Chief Justice, uh, uh, no, more of this intention to keep me by his side in Delhi, <laughs> that he made uh, several offers uh, uh, to me to take up uh, the assignments. It is true, but I turned down the offer. I turned down the offer by one sentence because it's all I am, as all of you have now realized, I am famous for one liners. I told Chief Justice that if you insist upon my taking up uh, any the, the post of chairman of any tribunal, then I will have to end up uh, filing a CAERP before the CNCA. <laughs> that I think that was the reason why at last he decided to uh, spare me. Um, lastly, see when I was really worried. Today the farewell started. I mean the ceremonial bit just started by 11:40 or so. When uh, the clock was ticking away, time was going away. I thought. Uh, my ceremonial bench will almost assemble at one o'clock uh, during lunch time, and uh, I think it will be empty chairs. So I requested somebody to ensure that the canteen is closed. 
I think even without that, all of you have showered your love and affection on me. I thank you very much. Just as the learned AG has reserved something for the evening farewell, I have also reserved something for the evening farewell. Why I am saying this is that I don't want to miss this crowd. I always have a problem with this mic. Before the mic, I told Sora members that before the mic, I have a starting problem. But once I start, I have a stopping problem. But I will not do it now. I thank you very much. I thank, uh, I take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Chief Justice who has been extra kind to me. Even at the cost of some of my own colleagues thinking that he is extremely biased towards me. I thank all of you. Thank you.